The Irma Interview, Arishar Tiger, Part 2 Hello again, thank you for being here with me once more. I hope you are all doing very well. I am Marie Swaru. This is the second part of my interview with Arishar the Irma Tiger who is one of the communications officers on board the Irma flagship Avian 1, currently in Earth's low orbit. This information can be taken as science fiction as for YouTube classifications, but I take this information very seriously, whoever has eyes to see. Please remember that it is me who is translating the recorded interview into English, so it is my wording, and the voice is the best one I could find to represent Arishar. This interview took place on the morning of September 4, 2023. I was in the Tejetan Information Recollection Center, also called CIC, on board Starship Talika. CIC is located directly under the ship's control bridge, connected with it through a large center staircase. This deck has huge panoramic windows all around and in front as well, so the visibility from there is excellent, you can see the earth pass to the left of the ship and the moon and stars to the right. It has several workstations, as isolated islands inside the large room, and consisting of several holographic computer 3D screens, and some digital ones as well. I sat on one of those workstations, and I connected with Arishar through a video conference, his friends simply call him Ari, for short. As we proceeded with the video conference, I could see several other Irma cats curiously looking over his shoulder trying to see with whom Ari was talking. This distracted me a lot from the serious interview because I have always found the Irma people to be extremely fascinating. I could see a beautiful short-haired large Irma leopard behind Ari, constantly looking my way, also with as much curiosity as I had perhaps wondering why huge Ari was talking to such a small and frail, furless creature, only with long strands of hair coming out of her head. As much as I was fascinated to see a leopard, spots and all, in a space suit. As we moved along with the interview, I suddenly noticed two leopard fingers, claws and all coming out from behind Ari's tiger head, just two fingers from a leopard paw and I tried not to laugh as Ari continued talking about very serious things, as the leopard, from behind was pranking Ari, you see, two fingers behind his head, the typical antenna on the head prank. Ari noticed and turned to see the leopard with his huge tiger face making an angry gesture, looking quite dangerous, while the leopard quickly removed his paw. And then Ari continued to answer the next question, while the leopard continued to make faces behind him, looking at the camera with his eyes wide open, making a silly gesture, between Ari's pointed ears, while I did my best not to laugh as we continued with the questions. Since when has Irma society known that many stories in the Federation data were false or wrong? Is it one of the incentives that have most prompted the Irma to go against the Federation's agendas? I don't know exactly since when, but as far as I can tell, we have always known that the Federation, although it was born with good intentions, it has now grown too large and powerful, and in many cases that breeds corruption. The Irma people have never fully trusted the Federation, and we have never conformed to their rules. We have always gone our own way. The treachery we see occurring with Earth has alerted us a lot more nowadays, especially after the Alcyone Council decided to agree with us in this perspective. We are happy not to be the only ones with a different opinion about what is happening on Earth. Have you shared your point of view and this information with the Tejitans before? If the answer is no, why? Do you think it hurts to see so much Federation control? How do you live it? 
We have never retained any information, we have always shared it with whoever listens, but as far as I know, the Tejitans never before cared to listen to what we had to say, as I feel they were blinded by Federation propaganda until Alanum came to power. We have always known that the Federation wants to control everything, but the Irma people have never been affected by the Federation's efforts, as we don't even consider the possibility of complying with their rules, unless we see a use for them, and as long as it does not conflict with our ethics and honor. We don't live under their control, we see and understand the Federation, but we choose to ignore it. What are your plans for the near future, and how could we help develop them? For now, I chose to remain in service on board the Avion 1. I chose to remain here observing Earth and everything that is happening. And I chose to help my king honor our cooperation and alliance treaties with the Tegetan people. I have no further plans for now. With this information, you, together with the Tejitans, and since the Federation lies and manipulates all of us, outside the Earth, and as souls we are all part of the same family, I was wondering. Do you still consider that it is humans exclusively who manifest Earth's nightmares there? Do you still consider that only humans can stop the nightmares only from inside Earth? Knowing that the game of life happens inside and outside simultaneously. How do you see this? Our opinion is that everything that is happening on Earth is caused by both the human manifestations and the collective manifestations of the people in space who have anything to do with what is happening on Earth. The Federation wants to respect and conserve what the people on Earth want to live and experience but it is the Federation itself that is manipulating the people's perception into wanting those experiences. Therefore, in our opinion, it is the Federation who is manifesting and causing everything that is happening on Earth. What the souls incarnated there want is manipulated by the Federation, therefore we do not agree with their excuses of protecting what the people want to manifest as a life experience. What is happening on Earth originates from the Tiamat Wars, or does it go further back? And what is the Irma story about it? What do you think are the reasons why the Earth remains a human farm planet, as was Alfrata, perhaps? As far back as my people know, Earth has been under Federation control almost since it was founded, and the Tiamat Wars were the result of a dispute between two Federation factions, one of which occupied Earth peacefully and another who cooperated with the Orion Group, and which arrived on Earth with hostile intentions, taking over the planet, removing the inferior Federation occupants until their backup arrived and then those two large groups strongly collided in a large battle that ended up destroying one planet and devastating others. The Irma had nothing to do with that battle. Planets Alfreda and Earth ultimately remain as two places where to have a life experience, Earth being the hardest experiential level. Although we accept from the highest point, that all souls know what they are doing, the Federation is controlling what those souls want from a lower perspective, and Earth is kept the way it is because it is a place to learn how to control what the souls there manifest for themselves. But, there are other better ways to achieve that. The obscurity the Federation presents when asking for details about why Earth is kept in constant turmoil makes us strongly suspect that at some level it is being managed by the same type of dark egregore beings which also influence and cause the same kind of problems from inside Earth, and who manipulatively hide their presence from Galactic Federation members. This is part of the reason why we remain here in Earth's orbit. 
to watch closely and to be seen here. Why do you think Al Frato was liberated? And what could be the hidden interests of the UFOP to do it? If they actually did it? Or didn't they? Or was everything a Federation invention? What is your opinion about why the UFOP is not interested in liberating the Earth? Could you tell us what your historical records say about Phaeton and about Earth? We think Alfredo was a fully controlled Federation planet back then, as it is now, and the liberation was nothing but pantomime, a reset, a make-believe for the people living there, for the experience, and manipulative purposes. They erased their past to start over with a new creation with a new set of rules, as in a new reality, simply because they can do it. They have done that before on other planets, and for many in the Federation, this is how you guide a civilization from the pre-industrial level into being interstellar. Civilization resets are nothing new, as we can see with Alfreda, and the liberation is nothing but a sham. The Galactic Federation is not interested in liberating Earth, because there is nothing to liberate it from other than from themselves. They see no need because it is they who are running and controlling everything that is going on there. They are running the show, and a show it is. That is why any alien invasion of Earth would be nothing more than another manipulative sham. Once more, they create the problem to sell the solution. Doesn't that sound familiar to you? Our records show the same past for Alfreda as for Earth. They have always been under Federation control and have been reset several times in their past, as the Federation has seen best and for obscure interests. Looking at the big picture, where all, or at least much of the Federation narrative is rigged, what do you feel would be the optimal way to proceed regarding Earth, if you could take over? If the Irma people could take charge over Earth, what we would do is remove all Federation forces so they would not interfere. Then we would neutralize all military forces on Earth so the overlords and their dark entities cannot retaliate, and we can do so with no need for violence. All we need to do is render all the hardware useless, and it can be done easily and in predicted simulated scenarios, all of Earth's military would be neutralized and taken over in a matter of hours. Then we would take over all mass media with which we openly and directly, with everyone looking at us as how and who we are, we would inform the population of everything that had been going on and what would happen next. The people would be told the blunt truth. We would take control of their military and police forces to avoid any unnecessary conflict and to retail social control and order during the complicated transition and for the true protection of the people. Then we would guide humans into forming a suitable holistic society while we solve all the unforeseen problems as we go along. Although this is possible and even easy for my people, that would be an alien invasion, even if it has good intentions, so we have thought of another possible scenario, and that is to take over control, but remain mostly invisible to the people while we guide them towards a holistic society, and while we surgically remove all the dark influence there, taking over their belief systems, for example, using them to guide, and not to oppress or to cause conflict and separation between people. We would proceed in one of those two ways, or with a variant between them. Do you also monitor your star seeds? Do you have some kind of direct contact with a terrestrial? One of our missions here is to monitor our star seeds of which there are two kinds, 
Those Irma souls who inhabit a human body, and those Irma souls who inhabit a terrestrial feline body. We monitor our human-looking star seeds closely, but only using a non-invasive telepathic connection with them. Although we do use and monitor human communications, we do not use them directly, as we mostly only watch. We do not have any direct contact with any star seed of ours at this time. And as for the feline star seeds, you must know that the ones who are closest to us on a soul level are those little house cats you have there, as they are both wild and civilized. Large cats, such as lions, tigers, leopards, panthers, and so on, as us as well, but in a more raw way. Those small cats you have at home are us there, they are our souls and our presence with you, comforting and protecting their adoptive family, especially from dark entities who dare bother humans. We are there among you, and we are hard at work shielding you from lower astral entities with evil intentions, just by being around you, as a house cat. We are connected to all felines but we are closest to you, through house cats. And many of us, Irmas, remember having been a house cat on Earth in our past lives. We were once an Irma, then a house cat for a few incarnations, for a helping mission there, and then we came back into being an Irma. Our mission is to shield you from evil presences, both on Earth as house cats, and in space as full-grown Irma. Thank you, Arishar. The interview will continue in part 3 soon. Thank you for watching my video, and for liking and subscribing for more. I appreciate it a lot. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love. Your friend. Marie Soiru.